Okay, everyone, welcome back to Dad Space. You know, the podcast for dads by dads. I'm joined by a dad who is not in my neighborhood. No, no. Um, I'm up in Canada, and my my guest will tell you where he's from in a second. But um, I think as soon as you hear his voice, you'll be like, okay, yeah, that's 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 great. Um, Doug is with me today. We're going to be talking about all things dad. Um, life with adult children, that whole thing about empty nest sometimes happens, sometimes it goes away. Uh, but anyways, Doug is here with me. Doug, welcome to Dad Space. So happy to have you here. How are you? Thanks, Doug. Yeah, I was sort of wondering there what if I could try and put on a Japanese or Chinese <laughs> accent, but yeah, I'm thinking that's not going to happen. No. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in the land down under. And um, this is where the world begins because, you know, it's uh, right. already a day ahead of you. And, um, yeah, I, you know, it's uh, just after 7 a.m. on Tuesday morning here. And uh, I guess you're still Monday evening over there. And, yeah, the sun comes up tomorrow. So the sun does come up tomorrow. You're all uh, happy, you know. And I'm, I live uh, in a spot called the Gold Coast, which is on the East Coast, uh, pretty much in the middle um of you know north south like right in the middle of that pretty much where the sun hits australia first in the morning um on the east middle of the east coast okay amazing i'm getting lots of visuals um and the nice thing is maybe i could you know contact you in advance get like tomorrow's lottery numbers or find out the score of a game you'll know i've got all that Okay, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Uh, tell me about your family. Let's talk about them. Let's gush on them a little bit. Okay, so we like I'm in my late fifties now. We've got four adult sons. Um, oldest is uh, thirty seven. The youngest is twenty two. And the oldest one, he's so he's fifteen years older than the youngest, and he was so happy when we announced the you know fourth child was coming along for about 30 minutes and then he had this depressive moment of I'm 15 years older when he's my age I'm going to be 30 and I'm going to be so uncool but um but they the boys all get on really well together and um it's yeah it, it's marvelous um and and now they're all you know adults and as we were talking a little bit earlier before the show at the moment we have um one of them at home we have been empty nesters, you know, for, for you know, a few months here, a few months there, and the kids sort of come and go. The I don't know what it's like over your way right now, but the rental market is uh, the last year or two is ridiculous with the price of rents and the lack of availability. So, um, yeah, the kids have been out renting and then the landlords have decided to renovate, you know, and so they – out they go and the struggle to you know struggle to find anywhere to live so but we've got plenty of empty bedrooms so we love having them back we've got we're an acreage and um it's uh it's fun having them around great uh, yeah my kids have all moved out and they all have their significant others and they're chasing their dreams which is awesome mm-hmm. mine it's interesting for us our kids are gone but we're not allowed to sell anything or get rid of anything. <laughs> so we have all of their stuff in the house, which we keep moving from one place to the next. So we're thinking about charging them like uh, a fee to come home, like to go to a museum to come and see their stuff <laughs> or like a storage unit. So we're trying to, we're working through the details on that. But um, yeah, we're not allowed to touch anything, but they're not here. So it's this weird limbo stage of what are we going to do with all this stuff? And what about us? So uh, what did you enjoy about those fleeting moments of empty nesting? What what was really fun for you and, and your and your partner? Um, wow, what was fun when I, I honestly I can't think. There's nothing specific. Like our house is big enough that we've all got enough space when they're all here. Um, I mean, we've been in this house four or five years now, and I think at the most we had three of them here at one time just for a couple of months. Um, no, I actually, for me, it's a lot more fun when they're here. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. Because yeah. I know for yeah. like for my wife, she, because because when the kids were home and everyone lived under one roof and they were younger, she was kind of like the organizer, the center of the universe, and we all kind of rotated around her. 
that was her mm-hmm. role, right? That's what she yeah. her default. And once once the kids left, she was missing that that uh, position, that thing that she held, where she kind of held the house together and got everybody to where they had to be and had everybody organized. She didn't have that anymore. So she was missing that. On the other side, for me, I'm like, we have all this freedom now. I'm celebrating the fact that the kids are gone and she's not as happy as I am. So we were on two different responses to the children leaving. Mm -hmm. And uh, that made for some interesting conversations because, again, I'm celebrating and she's lamenting over loss of of identity and i don't know if that's how you guys felt when that happened but it was very unique yeah, yeah. Uh, for my wife she loves cooking she's got like her dream kitchen in this house and that sort of thing so she loves it when they're all here and she can cook and prepare and and fuss and that sort of thing um so yeah but also to one of our sons has got two children so we've got a uh, and we're having four sons. Now, finally, we've got a granddaughter. And she's nice. 10. And nice. we've got a five-year-old grandson. And so in the, um, you know, s- school holidays, uh, we we mind them, off, you know, often for four or five days at a time. Just, you know, it's a treat for them. It's, you know, it <laughs> takes the pressure off their parents, you know, having them home all the time and because they work from home. And um, so that's a delight. We, we absolutely look forward to the grandchildren um, coming. Because they live about a ninety-minute drive away, so we don't okay. see them every week. So okay, so for those that don't know that listen to my show, I'm about um, one or two days away from becoming a grandfather myself for the first time. Oh wow! Congratulations. So thank you. So I need your wisdom, please, oh. Doug. What do I what do I need to know? I'm I'm an open book. I have my notes in front of me. I'm making well, notes. Tell me what I, I need to know. Come on. When we were living overseas for a while on this little tropical island, we had some very regular guests, and and there was a Mormon church just up the road. And you know, Mormons typically have large families, and this one fa- one couple they came, they kept staying in our little hotel that we had, so we would see them, you know, five or six times a year. They'd come for a couple of days, and you know, they had six or children, I think. And um, the wife said to me one day, you know, grandchildren are your reward for not killing your children. <laughs> Even though she was a good warm, Mormon woman, she was, you know, it's like, hey, you're going to kill them, you know. But so grandchildren are just awesome. You just, you know, you can do whatever you want with them, feed them up sugar. Uh, and, you know, I mean, I don't eat sugar at all, but um, you uh-huh. can do what you want. You can hype them up and send them home. Um, now, they're, I find them absolutely delightful. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, mm. uh, you yeah, know, I, I, yeah, that's that's a wonderful thing that you're about to experience. So, can you go back in your memory ten years ago when you became a grandfather for the first time? Any feelings for you? Because what I'm thinking right now, for me, it feels like when I had my firstborn, where I didn't have I didn't have all the answers. I didn't know what my role was as a dad. Mm-hmm. I'm learning as I go. I'm redoing that all over again now, becoming a grandfather shortly, where I'm going to have to relearn my role from beginning. So I'm looking to people with wisdom and experience to kind of go back in time and remember. What does that feel like? Absolutely. Look, we were living overseas on a little tropical island. And so we, we were like a long way away. So my wife, you know, two weeks before the birth, she packed up and she headed back because she's sort of was born to be a mother and a grandmother. Like, you know, that was just like she was not going to be away from the birth of our first child. So I had to hold the fort, the business, literally. And then I think when our granddaughter was maybe four or five months old, I just said to my wife, like, I can't stand not having seen her yet, like physically touching her. And so I just bought myself a ticket and I said to my wife, you're holding the fort, see ya. And I jumped on a plane and, uh, you know, like literally five takeoffs and five landings to get from where we were on this little island to back to Australia, you know, like a 24-hour trip. And I came back and uh, fortunately there was a spare bedroom at my son's house, so I got to stay there for the week with him. And here's – now, my daughter-in-law, she knew that I was a caring, doting father back in my day, 
Uh, you know, I was always changing diapers and all that sort of stuff. No worries. The first day I'm there was actually her first day to go back to part-time work. And my son wasn't getting home till about 6 p.m. And she had to leave at 4 p.m. And so she said, Doug, um, you know, I hope it's all right with you, but like, can you mind Caitlin for a couple of hours? Wow. You know, and I'm like, oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. Like, oh, okay, this will be interesting. (laughs) And then uh, she goes, just give her a bath and, and like, you know, just grab some clothes out of the drawer. And I'm like, uh, have you got any idea how long it's been since I've done any of this? And I, I just said to her, like, hang, hang on, you go to the drawers, you get the clothes out because, like, don't don't let me pick because, <laughs> you know, babies get hot, cold, you know, all this sort of stuff. And I'm like, this is a lot. And I always have my wife's guidance, you know, when our kids were little. and But after you'd done it for a while, you sort of were okay. But I hadn't done it forever. So next thing, I'm like, you know, getting the bath ready, doing the whole thing. And I'm like, whoa, this is like, um, yeah, I'm thinking my, my daughter-in-law's got so much more faith in me than I do in myself. But, um, yeah, she threw me straight to the wolves. and But it was it was a wonderful experience, you know, sort of did all that and bathed her and dried her and dressed her and sort of sat her in a little bouncer. And then my son came home and, um, yeah, and, and he was pretty happy that I'd done all that, you know. It was like, oh, good, I, you know. Yeah. And um, yeah, so that was a bit of a, um, uh, I guess, shock to the system, but look, very enjoyable. Um, so yeah, I hope you don't get something like that dumped straight on you. And, <laughs> yeah. and it's not like it was dumped on me, but it was just yeah. like, wow, I'm yeah, I've done this, but not for a long time. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, it's like a, a bath reference there, you either sink or swim, right? So um, yeah. you did it. That's really good. Um, yeah, thank you. That's uh. I'm just, I'm trying to figure out my role. I'm trying to figure out how much, how much of me to insert where, where possible, how much of me to stay out of it, you know, like they need to find their way as a Mm. new family, you know, without my interference, I'm trying to just kind of balance between there and and find my spot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I hear you. It's, it is a very fine line um, of. You know, like, uh, yeah, uh, particularly the grandparent thing. I I think we've got to sort of be in the background, but um, you just, I just figure, I just, my, I see my role as I've just got to always be available uh, for a hug, a play, a pat on the head, you know, play cards on the floor, play snap with the cards, you know, like just whatever they want, whenever they want it. Within reason, yeah. you know, and, and they pull it on. We go to the shops and they're like, you know, um, grandma, grandpa, can I have this? Can I have that? And like, I'm like, oh, would mummy let you get that? And, uh, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh, I'm not too sure. Well, let's just, let's call mum or let's, you know, like, you know, but we definitely um, make sure to the best of our, you know, concept that we're not, uh, run on our own race with them and and overriding what our son or and daughter in law would do. You know we're, that's constantly in our mind um, to not upset things that way, so that they know they can get away with bloody murder at grandma and grandpa's house, and then they go home and not behave. Um, yeah, it's that fine line of it's. I don't see it's our role to discipline them. But it's keeping them in check enough so that they wouldn't need to be disciplined. You know, it's yeah, yeah it's a, it's it's a it's a different, very different role because uh, the buck doesn't stop with you because you've only got them for a few hours or a few days. Right. And uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. But but it's a lovely time knowing yeah. that you can hand them back as you start because you know as we're getting yeah. a little bit older, Dave. Uh, yeah, you know, are. like. Where our energy levels are different, mm-hmm. <laughs> and so yeah, we can play with them for a little while, and um, yeah, and then saying no when they're on your back trying to give them horsey rides, and after like a couple of minutes, it's like <laughs> grandpa's <laughs> done. Like, we're, you know. we're done. <laughs> yeah. yeah, um, that's amazing. So, okay, another thing then too to jump over. Uh, do you have you have your own podcast, right? Yes, I do. 
Can we talk about that a little bit? I'm a podcaster. You're a podcaster. I love meeting other podcasters. First, tell us about your show and a little bit about that as well. Well, that five, probably six plus years ago now, my children were the ones who said, Dad, you've got to start your own podcast. And I'm like, what for? Why? Like, what's a podcast? I didn't even listen to one. And they're like, Dad, you love talking to people. Like, you just have a, have a chat. And um, just find random people and, you know, ask if you can record a conversation with them. I'm like, you got to be kidding. Anyway, about two years ago, I guess, I undertook a um, 12-month course to become an intuitive life coach. And when I was probably halfway through that, I decided, yeah, I think I have got something to say to the world. So I started my own um podcast and it started out it was called conversations with doug and then through the time i've changed the name slightly to intuitive conversations with doug so really now it's mostly about helping men to develop their intuition because we always see it as a um a woman's thing and the science goes for women and their intuition this is a very specific one to children it's been scientifically proved that when they're carrying the baby in their womb, the wife's brain, parts of the neural electrical pathways rewire in alignment with the baby that's in their womb so that they are, there's the same frequency there, mm. you know, like the, um, and, and so because the, the mother has to keep that baby alive while it's in her womb and for the first you know, months, year two or three after it's born. She's got to know when it needs to be fed, changed, et cetera, when it's hot, when it's cold. And it, like my wife used to say to our ch- two oldest boys when they were like three and four, don't ever lie to mummy because I know exactly what you're thinking. And if you ask them now, they'll say, she did. Yeah. And um, so because of that, you know, there's always that trait there that we've always thought of women's intuition. But when you look at the science of it, and sure, we don't get that benefit of that. And there's intuition comes in many, many, many forms. There's lots of different. That's just what I talked there about the child in the womb is one of many things that can happen. So I'm now trying to help men like realize that they're are in there is intuitive information that basically the universe has got our back the universe cares for everybody and so it won't it's not um forceful it can be a still small voice it can be a little synchronicity of two things happening a day apart that are very unusual but very similar to Mm. get your attention and um so yeah and it's I've sort of done it, and I did have a bit of a struggle with it a couple of months ago, and I sort of just slowed down and didn't put any episode. Yeah, I usually put a weekly episode out, didn't put any out for a little while, and then one of my boys noticed that um, I was a little bit behind in podcasts and rang me up and uh, just is very casual about the conversation, but then gave me some wise counsel. And said basically that I'm telling you what you would tell me. And so now I've got my finger out and I'm back full on podcasting again. And um, yeah, and it's it's a legacy we leave for our children and grandchildren. Mm. You know, like it's we're, we're leaving. I'm recording information that. If no one listened to it by my children and my grandchildren, right, it, it would be all worth it. Right. Um, you know, that um that my you know, my own grandparents never had that ability with technology um to pass anything on like that. So uh, yeah, so I, I just see that's a it's a pretty cool thing. And it's you know, it, it, I get a lot of wise counsel from my children. Um and Yeah, it's. I never looked at children this particular way, but I'm going to say this to the men that are listening out there, to the fathers, and and, and to the men who may be thinking, should I become a father or not? I think you've got to look very long term with the children. There's um, a scripture in the Bible, and it talks about 
something I, I'm not going to quote this exact I can tell you something like um children in one's youth are like arrows in the hand of a warrior so like if you're a warrior and you get a handful of arrows and a bow like mm. it's pretty handy yeah so the more children you have the more help you've got at, at, but that doesn't kick in in the first year or two. Now, you know, like children, 37, 35, 31, 22, technology, they're right into it. They're helping me unbelievably. Mm. Um, when we were, I, I said before, we were living on a little island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. When we went to sell that, um, I won't go into that story much, but one of my boys came to me um, and it was a synchronistic moment. And uh, he said, Dad, I think this is how you should move the business on. And I'm like, whoa, because yesterday I had this a similar, a very similar thought that lasted for 30 seconds and left and would have never come back. But he came in with five pages of notes that he'd been researching. You should do this, Dad. And I'm like, after a couple of minutes, I said, I'm on board. Go and talk to your mother because this is crazy stuff you're talking about, really crazy. But if it works, it'll be insane. Anyway, he went, took his mum for a two-hour walk along the beach, and they came back, and he said, yep, she's on board. We're doing it. And 14 months later, we raffled our business off. And end of the day, cash in the bank, three times as much as we would have sold it for. And, um, yeah, and it's like, wow. And it wasn't just the idea. It was how to do it. So he'd done a lot of research. He put in a huge amount of effort. Um, our other sons chipped in and did what they could do and everything. So it's like, um, yeah, it's long term. I'm really starting to realize now, like, these children are just, like, amazing. They're just such an extension of you. Like, it's like having half a dozen arms. You can just do so many things all at once. Um, be- and it's not like I'm using slave labor. It's all volunteer. Like they come yeah. to me and say, Dad, we can do this. You can do that. I can help you with this. Um, you know, I'm just my podcast to date is audio only, but um, one of them's a professional videographer. And so he set me up the other day. And most of my interviews are just like this on Zoom. But yeah. the other day I had one at home. Um, with someone they came to the house and so we he set up all these cameras and lights and things and we shot it all and then he's showing me how to zoom in on the video like just in on the person and you know and, and cut oh, and I can cut bits out because I'm used to doing that with audio but to actually be able to zoom in on the video into a section of it and, and I was like oh I had no idea you could do that and uh, you know I mean you do it with a photograph you crop a photo but now we're cropping minutes of video into one and it's just like this is really cool to have that one-on-one help and and it's not even me asking them to do it for me it's them saying this is what you can do this is what's possible so they teach me so much now it's not funny so yeah amazing how they start out so so dependent on us as dads just to survive when they're young Mm -hmm. And now yeah. they're turning around and supporting you. You know, that's that's a great that's a great story. And I think new dads don't really appreciate that and because they're so oh. caught up in diapers and no sleep and feedings and they're thinking, is this ever gonna end? But yeah. there's gonna be a day when they come and support you as a dad in a in an adult relationship. And I think uh I think that's one thing that we we forget to think about the you know what that's going to be like down the road when our children yeah. get older. So it's a good exactly. it's a good reference. I like that. Yeah. yeah. And when you just before you said that word, they're so dependent on us when they're little. That was exact the exact word I had in my head. The dependency. Yeah. I mean, you're keeping them alive. And um, but yeah, and I remember my son who's got the two um, grandchildren, uh, two grandchildren now. I remember. He's, he's very ambitious, wanted to like set himself all up and, you know, financially before having children. And I remember him ringing me saying, oh, you know, I, I think we're pregnant. I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, I haven't bought a house yet. And he was like panicked, like over like 
how life was ever going to continue financially with the challenge, the expense of a, of a child. And I'm on the other end of the phone, like pretty happy. I can tell you, like stoked, but I'm giggling. I'm just like, and I'm trying <laughs> not to let him hear my giggling, but I'm just, because I know it's just going to work out fine. Like it's all going to be good, you know, um, but he just can't see the forest for the trees, you know, because of the whole financial thing. It's like that these days. I get it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's worked out fine. Like they've got their own house and everything now. And, you know, it's all just worked out wonderful. But, um, yeah, receiving that first call. and Because we we just – we sort of didn't know much better. Back in our day, we got married. Yeah, we got married at 20. The day after I turned 22, our hmm. first son was born. Wow. We just did it all young. Well, we we got together when we were 16 and we talked and talked and we decided – we wanted to travel to Europe. We wanted to do a lot of traveling. Would we do it now, like, you know, in, in our 20s, or would we do it later? And we just decided we'll do it later. Uh, and so we have. We've, we've done all the traveling and that now when the kids are all growing. Um, so we got just got stuck in real early and um, had our children early. Uh, so it was we were 37 when we had our fourth son. And so I remember going to the hospital with my wife and she comes out from seeing the nurses and the doctor rolling her eyes. And she goes, they're asking, oh, is this your first child? You know, we're 37. But that's kind of normal today. Like, hmm. you know, um, yeah. and same thing. She went in to uh, give birth to the fourth one. And she said to them, something's not right. Because she'd had three very normal births with the first three. Something's not right. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, like whatever, like, you know. And she said, look, I'm telling you, something's not right. And they go, well, you know, like, it's all right, love, like, that. She goes, this is my fourth child. And they went, oh, well, well, what's – then all of a sudden they listened. And then I think within five to ten minutes I was being gowned up, you know, putting things over my shoes, um, and they're just like, bang, emergency cesarean now. And when they did it, it was very necessary. You know, he had the cord around his throat and neck and he was never going to be able to get his head engaged and, da, 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 yeah. you know, like, um, but yeah, well, we, we got the experience young and uh, just did it. So I guess my encouragement to any fathers out there or potential fathers, you know, if you, if you've got one child, will I have more? Or if I've got none, I'm sort of thinking it's going to be hard. Oh, if you think, Think long term. I'd say definitely. Um, uh, you know, I mean, if we didn't have children now, I wouldn't know any different. But my life is just insanely awesome with these children. It's just, um, you know, the, like coming on this podcast talking about this because you know sometimes like I've got a podcast and and I'm a, I'm a coach and things like that. And and I, I at times. I get imposter syndrome. I think, you know, who am I to say this? But to come on this podcast, I'm like zero, zero imposter syndrome coming on this podcast because it's just like it's about dads. Mm -hmm. I'm a dad. I've got four <laughs> awesome children. Like it's go. like, yeah, this is me. You know, like, yeah, this is this is me. This is um, – and I could only encourage people. And, and like being a parent, I guess, isn't for everybody. Not everybody that's born is, you know, it's, it's your plan. But – um, for me, it has worked out wonderfully. We originally, when we were teenagers, talking about it, we we thought we might have six children, um, but you know we ended up with four. Um, but the the things that have happened, we can look back at the birth of each child and the different things that happened and how our it changed things. And then those changes cause knock-on effects and how right. wonderful long-term all those knock-on effects. Like we, with our fourth child, he was very active when he was started walking, like extremely active. We had a two-story house and it got dangerous to have him in that house. He was going to hurt himself mm. off that balcony or down the stairs. Like so To the point where we agreed we have to sell this house and buy a single level house where there's no stairs uh, to keep him safe. And 
things happened. We couldn't sell it. The market wasn't good. So we ended up renting that house and bought and then got another mortgage and, and bought another house. And then within months of having now having two houses, the real estate market went crazy. And but like both houses went way up in value. It was just like, oh, had we not had that fourth child, wow. we would have just stayed in that normal old house and it would have gone up a lot in value, it would have doubled in value too. But now we had two houses. And it was a little bit of a financial struggle. We had two houses and it was like, oh, okay, this is this is kind of nice. We just we just made a couple of hundred thousand dollars in, in a year or two extra on top of our, you know, like that we would have never made had we that not happened. It just – and it's life's not about making money or whatever, but we've just had so many wonderful things like that happen. Um, yeah. I love that. What a great story. Okay, so let's jump back to men's intuition for a moment into your mm-hmm. podcast and what you're what you're learning and what you're teaching. Um, I do. I, it's very familiar to hear that women have strong intuition. Can we talk a little bit about an example of men's intuition from your from your teachings and, and what you're sharing with the world? Maybe an example of it, and um, maybe what in, men's intuition is not. I would like to clarify what it isn't as part of our okay. definition. Can you help us with that? Sure. Okay. Well, I'll give you an example. I'm just thinking our last wedding anniversary. I was working that day and I wasn't going to get home till late, like 7 or 8 p.m. So I said to my wife, like, I'm sorry, but we can't go out to dinner. Like, you know, I'm going to be late. About four o'clock, my day, my schedule radically changed. And I quickly rang her and said, hey, I'm going to be home in an hour. Like, I'll be home at 5 p.m. We can go out for dinner. You pick a restaurant. I'll whip in, have a shower, change, and we'll go. So I get home at five, um, quickly change and all that. And I say, okay, where are we going? And I said, you know, ring up, make a booking, whatever, you know. And she goes, well, we can go to this restaurant we've been to two or three times before. It was a pizza pasta restaurant. I said, okay. And it was always nice. She said, oh, we can go to this other Thai restaurant that we've never been to. And she said, you choose. And I went, and I was not ready for that question because in my mind, it, the decision was already made when I got home. <laughs> and I stood there and the thought came to me, I wanted to say immediately, oh, I don't know. But I instantly had a thought and it said, don't say that because you do know. Mm. And I and she was standing in the kitchen. And she's looking at me. And she does know I take a little while to make decisions at times. So she's giving me my space. And I thought, okay, Doug, you do know the answer to this. If we go to pizza and pasta where we went before, this is all my thoughts in my mind, how will I feel at the end of that meal? And I thought, okay. And it was it was a very neutral kind of feeling. And then I thought, if we go and eat Thai, how will I feel? And all of a sudden, I had a better feeling in my stomach. But I'm not tasting food or anything weird like that. I just yeah. I just had a better feeling. I said, we'll go to Thai. She goes, great. So we jumped in the car. We get down there. And it was a Thursday evening. And we, we thought, you know, it won't be that busy. It wasn't Friday or Saturday. We got there, you know, at 5.30 p.m. And we sort of said, oh, have you got a table for two? And they're like, ooh, um, mm, they're looking around. Oh, okay. There's one table left. It was like, wow. So we just got in and we've been to Thailand half a dozen times on vacation through the years and we'd love it. And we're not much of, not big drinkers, but there's a particular beer over there called Singer. And this Thai restaurant had this beer. So we got one of those each. And we just had, we're only there for like 90 minutes, but we had the best time. Hmm. The next day I said to my wife, I told her like what had happened, and she goes, "Yeah, I wanted to go to Thai, but she said because it was our anniversary and not mine, I didn't want to make the final decision." Mm. But she was extremely happy that I had intuitively in that, like, like it made my wife happier with me because I made a decision relatively quickly, took the pressure off her. Um, and I just went with what was inside me. So that's one of many, okay. many ways, many different things. 
So intuition, like for me, we've got our five senses, hearing, touch, taste, you know, sight, things like that. For me, uh, you could say intuition's the sixth sense. You know, that's a pretty loose sort of term. It's like, and people say, well, what is it? What do you mean? Well, I'm saying the universe, the, the, there's a force out there that likes you and likes all of us and wants to help us and make our lives easier than they are. But we've got to accept that help and we've got to recognize the help. So I like to look at it. I, I Look, I only went to grade 10 at school. I don't have university degrees. I've got an advanced diploma I got when I was a professional firefighter in management, fire service and emergency management, things like that. But I'm not highly educated, so I dumb things down to my level. So how I'm looking at intuition here, it's it's like a frequency. There's energy, there's unseen energy. Two magnets, you you either push them together and they stick together, but you can't see what's holding them together, or you turn one around and they'll repel and there's no way you can hold those things together. It's invisible. You bring out your cell phone. And it's like a little voodoo device because, you know, if you went back 200 years ago and you showed people what was that, they'd probably burn you at the stake. Uh-huh. Yeah. But everything that everything that comes to that phone is invisible. We cannot see it. There's frequencies and there's energy. And there's frequencies and energies that come to us as well. We have to try or with, to recognize these frequencies that come And they can come in a lot of different ways. For me, there's a term, and it's a French term, and it's called claircognizance, which means clear. Clair just means clear. Clear knowing. And that is a strong way that I get intuition. I just know things. My boys will say to me, Dad, how did you know that? You know, because I'll say something like that, something will happen, and they go, how did you know that was going to happen? How did you know about that? And I go, no, I just know. I just I, there was no specific time in my prior history that I remember learning about it. It's just I just know. I certainly I don't know everything. That's for sure. But there are some things that you can't tell me it's not right. I just go whatever, and they'll say, "Well, prove that it's right." I go, "I can't prove it. But I just know it." So there's an inner knowing comes to me sometimes, and I follow. I choose to follow it. The other thing for me is synchronicities. And um, like, uh, we'll go back to that example before I go, when, when we raffled our business off. The day, like we, you got to look, we've got a 18 room hotel, restaurant and scuba dive business on an island that someone wrote in a magazine once and said, that's the sixth most remote place on earth. It's, you know, 350 miles north of the equator in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, uh, west of Hawaii. So you, we now want to sell that business. So, yeah, a lot of people would dream about moving there, but how many of them are actually going to do what I did, pack up their family, sell everything, buy a business on the middle of nowhere? And, and it's a scuba dive business. Not everyone's a scuba diver. Um, so it's not going to – what I'm getting at there, it's not like you're going to have hundreds of people wanting to buy your business because, you know, it's very remote. It's, it's yeah. a very niche market. So – a year or two before, because electricity was so expensive, there I did a crowdfunding thing and I raised forty six thousand dollars and put solar panels on the the hotel, like to help pay for the very 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 expensive electricity there. And all of a sudden, now we're starting to get ready to sell the place to move. But because and the reason we we're going to sell it is because of our birth of our granddaughter. She was back in Australia, and our son and daughter in law had lived. Oh, sorry, not the birth. No, they'd lived over on the island with us from when she was one till she was two. So we saw our granddaughter every day for a year. Wow. And then they were moving back to Australia. And so we just decided, okay, we've been here many, 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 many years. It's time for us to move back too. And so I had, because of the crowdfunding, I had this thought, wow, I wonder if I could crowdfund to sell the hotel. I'm thinking that's a weird thing. And then I thought, Maybe I could raffle it. And like I had that thought for 30 seconds and that thought went and was never going to come back. Mm-hmm. The next day, my oldest son walks into the room and he'd like two or three days earlier, he'd arrived unannounced from Australia, which was like never happened before. 
because we would always get that because we were on a remote little island. We would always get the kids to bring things in their luggage, to, you know, yeah. food or a spare part for something that had broken or whatever. And, and all of a sudden, he just arrived and it's like, wow. So he he had this plan. He had it all documented out. So the day after I had that thought, he walks into my office and says, Dad, you got a few minutes to talk about selling the business. I said, sure, sure, sit down. And he like he shares his plan with me. I think you should raffle the business off. And I was just like, whoa. <laughs> wow. Because wow. yesterday I had that thought. Now, and I'm just like, you, yeah, you yeah. know, there's a few like ex, like crazy, very expressive words going on inside <laughs> me, which I won't say on the podcast. But I'm like, <laughs> and that's why. I, I, so I was like, okay, okay. Like I'm, uh, someone's got my back here. Someone's interested. And boom, and, and you know, long story short, fourteen months later, we actually marketed. We sold tickets in a hundred and fifty different countries around the world, like with three months of online marketing. It was crazy. So now that was a big one. So that that was a big call because we were putting our neck on the line there. Like, what if it all went wrong? How you know, like, what if people thought it was a scam? Like, you yeah. know, there's a million different things. So we had to. It's what it took us 14 months to get it going because there was so many eyes to dot t's to cross. But the universe gave me such a big synchronicity, such a big challenging thing to follow a message to follow that the reward was phenomenal and that's what i find um the risk reward thing there too now going back to the first example with going to dinner on our anniversary we had a wonderful evening but if i hadn't chose thai and i said let's go to pizza pasta yeah, we'd have still had a nice we we probably would not have got food poisoning you know everything probably would have been fine but it was extra good at the Thai restaurant so I we both believe the choice was better to go mm. to that restaurant overall um so yeah I mean I I can't tell you what the universe is or explain to you and everyone you spoke to would have a different if some people just believe there is no life after death and it's like well okay that's fine I believe there's something out there. Yeah. And it's whatever it is, but I know it's got my back and I know yeah. it likes me yeah. and it doesn't steer me wrong. Now, can I listen wrong? Sure. Remember, you and I, we were at the age where we remember our first car, the yeah. radio in it, probably had a dial to go, you <laughs> yeah. know, and if we were lucky, you know, we go from one station to the other. So what did we get in between the stations? Static. Correct. Right. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, we've got to sort through the static of these messages coming to us. And it's, it, it doesn't come instantly. You don't, if you're a two year old and you're playing with the radio in an old car, you're going to be turning the dials and it's going to go staticky and you might just stop and you go and get scared and go away from the radio. But if you persevered and kept playing with the dials, eventually you, that two year old might hear some funny, news broadcast to come on and and it's very uninteresting and boring and they walk away but if they kept turning the dial they might actually hear a kid's song that they enjoyed but eventually as they get older now they're 10 years old 15 20 years old and they're playing with the dial on the radio they dial it really quick and they know they know you know 83.9 97.2 all you know yeah. they know where to go and so now it's real easy. You just hit one button and it goes to the new thing. Um, so the two-year-old baby trying to dial into the the a nice sound from the radio is very difficult. And that's how we are in the beginning until we start to learn this. But I think we'll all admit, once we learn to master how to use the radio, it's really quick and really easy. Um, right. And it's pleasant. We're, and if we don't like the song, we change the channel. And, you know, so for me, the whole reason why men need to do that is to make their lives easier. If we can make every man's make one better decision a day, we're going to kick the cat less often when we get home. Yeah, right. We're going to be more pleasant to our spouse, more pleasant to our children. We're going to be nicer at work. 
Like it might get us one extra promotion in our life, in our life over our career that could make all the difference to our lives. And years ago, I heard us. Um, I think it's. I'm not even sure if I'm going to pronounce his name correctly. 150 years ago in America, there was a guy called um, David Henry Thoreau, and he said most men live lives of quiet desperation. Mm. And when I heard that 35 years ago for the first time, I was like, oh. God, that is such a true statement because I had men in my lives who I looked at and I thought, that is that is what's happening with them. They are living lives of quiet desperation. And it's, yeah, and I thought, that's not what I want for my life. And right. um, so I'm, I'm looking for, uh, I don't have the answers. I'm looking for all the help I can get. And I just see intuition for me has been a way to, um, Tap into a bit of a superpower, so that I've got I've got a a bit of an advantage, and I'm not trying to get an advantage over other people, but I'm trying to just get an advantage to make my life easier. Yeah, so I hope that makes sense. Oh, those that's great, <laughs> so good. Um, is there anything that you would caution people around what intuition is not? Is there anything that is a common, maybe a common belief that people believe intuition is this, but it's really not that? It's more of what you've described so far? Well, look, uh, my, the um, Intuitive Life Coaching Academy I went to, the lady that runs that, she is the most business-like person out. She's got a master's degree in psychology. She's You start talking about the science of intuition with her, and she's like, Bang! She would she take anyone on on the planet. I don't care who they are, and discuss the science of how it all works. But ten years ago, she was doing psychic readings, so she likes to think of her um, life coaching academy as Hogsworth meets Harvard. Hmm. Like so, yes, people can see people who are intuitive, particularly women, as oh, there's one of those weird psychic people. Hey, and some of them are. Mm. And the weirder they are, the more I like them, actually, once I get to know them. And, and it's like, you're actually pretty cool, you know, because you're ga- you got the guts to look into something different and, and, and analyse it. Um, yeah, so some people might think intuition is being psychic. Um yeah, uh, am I psychic? I don't. I'm as psychic as, like I said to you before. Sometimes I just know things, and and I'm not sure how I got the information, but I just know it. And you can't tell me it's not true because I know it. Uh, and that's not on a lot of things, and not that often. So that's, I guess, that's as psychic as I would say I was. But I don't see visions. I don't, you know. Um, actually, here's another real quick good example. I interviewed a. Um, Surf life saving Ironman champion here probably a year ago, and he lives about 45 minutes away. And I said to him, Trevor, you know, like you've got four world titles, six Australian titles. He was on, remember the old show Baywatch? Yeah. He yeah. was on Baywatch one episode playing himself, right? So he's, this is an elite athlete. And I said to him, so give me an example of how intuition works for you. And he goes, well, the Ironman race, you know, like it's a, a run on the beach, it's a swim, and it's a paddle. On You know, they get on a board and paddle it, you know, on their knees on the board and they paddle. He says, and we do it in various order. He said, this one particular race, the last leg was the swim. He said, and I hadn't been doing too good, and I hit the water last. Everybody's in front of me. And this song comes into my head, the old Fleetwood Mac song, Go Your Own Way, Mm. just keeps coming over in his head. Go your own way. Go your own way. Now, they've got to swim out, like however far it is out to the back of the breakers where there's a a massive big buoy out there, and they've got to swim around it. So how can you go your own way? Well, he said, you know, I'm pretty good on breath hold. He said, so I just go down. That's my way. And he goes, and down I go. And all of a sudden, there's currents, and they're going out. And he goes, I'm in the current, and I'm swimming in the current, going out. And I come up, and I take a breath, a couple of breaths, down again. He said, next thing, I see the buoy. I turn around it, and I'm heading back in, and I look up, and everybody's still coming out to the buoy, and I'm actually in front. And 
He said, of course, he doesn't win every race like that. But on that day, he a voice came into his head with a song, Go Your Own Way, and he chose to follow it. Um, you know, so and like he he's a very intuitive sort of guy as well. That's why I was interviewing him. Um, but you know, so like, has he got voices in his head? Has he gone insane? No, a song came to him. You know, so I guess that's not really answering your question. Are there things to avoid? But it's um, I, I just I guess I'm just trying to give an example of how different people look at things because. Um, that would be called in the psychic world clear audience, which means that's French for clear hearing. Mm. He, he clearly heard something inside his head. Now, did he have voices in his head? He had a Fleetwood Mac song. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, so it depends how you look at that voice in his head. Um, it, 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 do you ever have songs come in your head? I know I get them stuck oh, yeah. in my head for days. Um, you know, so, uh, yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay, yeah, because I know that for me, like, I have I have seven podcasts that I do, which is one of them. And one of the podcasts, um, I woke up one, one day before work, and I'm laying in bed. I open my eyes, and I have the name of the podcast. I have um, all the information about how it's going to be created, what it's going to do how it's going to be done. And it's kind of like, I, it was frustrating because I didn't get the chance to actually to like plan it. It was kind of like given to me I'm like, here mm -hmm. it is. Nice. So I go to my computer and I type it in. The domain is available. No one's using that title. No one in the world has ever used the title. Nice. So everything was in line. Everything was all done like a little package. Just here you go. And it's like, who, why why me like and but again frustrating because i want to be part of the process of making something but no here it is just go do it go go execute and i'm like what a weird feeling you know and i'm like quickly scribbling it all down writing it all out make sure i got it because my mind will go somewhere else and sometimes i lose some of those things but it was this weird feeling of just being mm -hmm. given something and then asked to go do it and I didn't, I couldn't understand it at the moment. I didn't understand what was going on. Well, because of the things I study, that's not the first time I've heard a story like that. I've heard people like with books, businesses, all sorts of things that just either woken up or they've yeah. been meditating or something and it just like, boom, just dropped in. And they've almost had that same comment you had. It's sort of like, not disappointment, but just like I didn't do this, I didn't create yeah, this. Yeah. It just was given to me. Like I didn't get the time to develop it, or you know, brainstorm it. It just the whole thing just dropped. Yeah, in my lap. yeah. It's like a download. Yeah. Mm. yeah so sort of, the yeah. universe has got your back. The universe has got everyone else's back who needs to hear that podcast. Mm. So it wasn't just for you. It's because you don't know, podcast just for your own to listen to yourself. There's a lot of people needed to hear whatever that podcast was about. And the universe just said, Here's a willing person. Uh, was this your first podcast or your, or your third? This, or your was fifth my, or? this was my third. Yeah. I was living the third. next chapter yeah. for authors. And I've yeah. had yeah. 250 authors on in 18 months. Nice. Yeah. Like yeah. there's just this wide open dam that kind of opened up and mm. a flood of people coming. And it feels so inadequate because I'm not an author. I don't know anything about writing a book, but I have a <laughs> podcast for authors and I get to meet great people. Like, Do, right? do you like reading books? A well, yeah, I get a little bit. I'm not a huge read. My wife loves reading. <laughs> but for yep. me, I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay. I like audiobooks, but it's just the fact mm -hmm. that this was like a download to me that that came out of see, seemingly came out of nowhere. Like yeah. it wasn't like I was thinking about starting a podcast for authors. It wasn't like I was planning it or spending months and months working on a title. It was mm -hmm. just like, here you go. And in that split moment, split second, I'm like, I know what I have to do. And I don't know why it's me to do it, but 
okay and just be willing and open to follow that follow that path yeah. that's been put in front of you yeah and you know like half a dozen people in the previous month may have had that dropped in their lap as well and they didn't do anything with it and i'm sure you and i could both attest that we've had other things drop in our lap that we didn't do anything we didn't write it down we forgot about it or whatever mm -hmm. um i think the universe has got everybody's back and the universe knows what we need to hear experience see etc cetera, etc cetera. and it's just it's fine it's it's trying to find it, it's not like i said it's not forceful yeah. it's very gentle so it wasn't going to force you to do it. It wasn't going to possess you and force you to do it. Or the or the six people prior to you who yeah. it might have been, it might have floated through their thought process. Um, you know, as they were, you know, there was a there was a bit of static. They were tuning in. They were starting to get that yeah. idea, and then they're like, "Oh, podcast, that's scary. I don't want to do that." Like you know, and yeah. bang, and now it's like the frequency's dropped, and you're like, and you're much open, more open to the frequency because you already had two podcasts going. Yeah. So there was a lot less fear for you because you already knew the basic process. You had the equipment, the infrastructure. It's right. like, oh, here we go. This is, you know, the the frequency of that author's podcast is trying to find a similar frequency. And it's like, and you, you've got it already because wow. you're already set up. Podcasts not a scary thing for you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. See, I love, I love talking to you, Doug. This is. This is really, really fun. Um, you've given me so much of your time, and I know you're going to come back and talk to me on some of my other shows, which I'm so excited to have you back for those as well. But, um, Doug, before we go, promote your podcast again and uh, ways to get in touch with you. Um, I've, you've been so so gracious with your time. I really appreciate your insight today. No worries. So it's Intuitive Conversations with Doug. And it's on all the different, you know, uh, podcast platforms. I do have a website and it's just my name, which is Doug, D-O-U-G, and my surname, which is, it's a German surname, Bites, B-E for egg, I for ice cream, T for Tom, Z for zebra, for all of you North American things. In Australia, we say Z. Yeah. So just Doug, DougBites.com. Uh, you can see me on there. And um, yeah, great. Thank you. It's really great. And I can tell that this is a, a different way for you to podcast and being a guest. So it seems like you had some fun today talking, and I love that. You seem so so engaged with our topic and helping dads, and that's so nice of you to come on and share your wisdom with us and your insight. And I know that the dads listening today, whether they're going to become a grandfather shortly or uh, they're a new dad, there's so much good goodness that you've shared with us today. Really want to thank you, Doug, for, for being willing to come on the podcast. My pleasure, Dave. Thanks for having me. And yeah, it, it's been a nice little thing being in a, in a different seat, you know, um, <laughs> get, getting a chance to waffle on. Because when I'm in your seat, I'm there trying to, because yeah, as you can see, I like to talk a lot. Like I'm, I'm trying to bite my tongue all the time. I'm just like, just let them talk, let them talk. <laughs> no, it's great. You're a great guest, Doug. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thanks, Doug. Awesome. All Bye. the information will be in the show notes, everyone. Go check out Doug. Go check out his podcast. You're done listening to him here, but that's just the beginning. You can go check out Doug's podcast and get way more Doug in your life. Doug, thank you for being so willing and open to talk today. Hey, thanks for listening to Dad Space today. I'm so thankful that you were here for this episode. If uh, you like the show, please let another dad know. Hey, <laughs> that kind of rhymed. Anyways, uh, share the episode out with somebody in your circle who would love Dad Space. That means so much to us here for our guests who donate their time to be on the show. And we just want to see this grow. So, again, another rhyme. Oh, wow. Anyhow, I <laughs> um, think I need to write a song or something. Thank you for being here for with Dad Space. And again, looking forward to the next episode. Look forward to having you here again with us. And if we can help you in any way, if you have a great guest idea for the show, a topic that we you would love us to cover, we would love to do that here on Dad Space. So thanks for listening and thanks for being part of the community. And to you, Dad, thank you for listening and thank you for sharing Dad Space. Catch you on the next one. Take care.